Hey, what's up otaku? Rick here, ready to dive into the world of anime with me? I won't keep you long and let's get to the video. Today we have an anime that will make your head explode. Can you imagine being the only one who can't use magic in an academy full of magicians, but being a monster in the art of the sword? Well, that's the world of History Wendant's War. If you want to know more about this adrenaline pumping anime, I'll leave the name in the first comment. So leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the bell so you don't miss the next videos. Now get ready, because today's summary is going to be on fire. Shall we go? The anime begins by taking us to Rygarden Magic Academy, a place where being good at magic is everything, bro. Anyone who isn't good at magic is treated like dirt, both by the students and the teachers. And then we meet our protagonist, Wilser Four, the guy who is considered a nobody because he can't even throw a spark. But what nobody expected was that the guy has a willpower that's like a war tank. Even though he has no talent for magic, he spends all his free time working in the dungeons, sharpening his sword skills, because magic just isn't for him. Now, Rigardon isn't just any magic school. It's the capital of magic, where everyone is learning to master their spells. In one of these classes, Professor Edward Surfence is explaining how an ore mixed with a special powder can ignite a fire spell. Professor Edward Surfence, who is that serious guy who doesn't take it easy, decides to call Will to the front of the class to give a demonstration. But of course our boy is traveling, dreaming of cutting up monsters in the dungeons. And when he goes to the front of the class, you know, he freezes up. Meanwhile, the whole class is there, just waiting for him to fail so they can have a laugh. The teacher tries to motivate him, but to no avail. Wilser can't put the pieces together. The class bursts into laughter, and you can feel the shame in the air. It's tense. And then, out of the blue, Sion, that rich, cocky kid, unleashes fire magic on the materials. Thinking he's the greatest, the teacher shushes him on the spot, but Sion gives a lame excuse, saying he just wanted to help his classmate. Oh well, can you imagine the pressure this boy feels? Everyone's watching, waiting for him to fail, and he just wants to keep to himself. You can already see that the atmosphere at the academy isn't the best, especially for those who don't do well in magic. The scene shows how Will is perceived by everyone at the magic school. After class, Wilser is down. As he's leaving, Cyan and his henchmen, Lyril and Gordon, arrive to annoy Wilser. Cyan is your typical stuck-up playboy, he thinks he's the king of the place just because he knows how to do magic. He starts making fun of Will, saying that he's only good for killing weak little monsters in the dungeon to earn a few bucks in credit. But then Colette Lore, Will's friend, arrives on the scene and gives Cyan a hard time, calling him an idiot, the kid gets bit, but tries to keep his cool and tells Will to give up, because he'll never be a real wizard. This part is hilarious, really. Seeing Colette put Cyan in his place is sensational. You can see that she doesn't take any crap and is always there to defend Will, even when he's about to give up. The chemistry between them is great and adds a touch of levity in the midst of so much drama. Colette is always there for Wilser, and she says, forget that asshole, you're better than that. But inside, Wilser is starting to doubt himself. He knows he's not cut out for magic, but just having someone like Colette by his side, someone who really cares, is enough to lift his spirits. She's the real deal. Wilser sends her a casual compliment, calling her pretty, and Colette turns red like a pepper. It's very funny, she's all out of sorts, trying to keep her composure because of her noble origins, but Wilser is there, playing the charm like it's nothing. The boys got style, there's no denying that. Then, Colette starts talking about how the magic sellers have been defending the heavens for centuries, ever since these celestial invaders first appeared. A long time ago, five mages banded together to drive these guys out and sealed the sky, bringing peace back to the world. Now, becoming the greatest wizard to reach the Tower of Magic is every wizard's ultimate dream and the top of the top. Colette asks if the Ice Maiden, Albisvina, is looking after them today. 
Wilser says yes, imagining her sitting in the window watching everything. This reminds Wilser of his childhood, and we see a more sensitive side to Will. He and Colette have a chat about the past, and we discover that Wilser made a pinky promise to Euphoria that they would see this sunset together one day. Euphoria is now a top mage in the Magia Vendor's Tower. Even though he knows he has no talent for magic, Will still wants to make good on his promise to watch the sunset with Euphoria at the top of the tower. That's when we realize that he's not going to give up so easily, even if everything seems to be against him. This part shows a deeper side to Will, one that goes beyond the guy who only knows how to fight. He has dreams, he has feelings, and this promise to Euphoria is what really motivates him to keep going. You can see that behind the tough swordsman facade, there's a guy full of hope and the desire to make his dreams come true. A few days later, Wilser is on his training routine when he runs into Professor Workner. The professor scolds him for going into the dungeons again, this time reaching the seventh floor on his own. Workner isn't happy, but Wilser only wants to know one thing. Will I get credit for this? Workner, annoyed, ends up releasing two credits for defeating a Dark Guardian. But he makes it clear that if Wilser wants to become a magic seller, it's going to be a tough road. Workner explains that to level up, he'll need credits in three areas. Writing, sorcery, and practical combat. But since Wilser can't use magic, he's already at a disadvantage. It's almost impossible to get there with combat skills alone. What's more, the professor reminds him that Wilser is racing against time to graduate. If he doesn't get four credits by the weekend, he's out of the academy. Wilser is worried, but he doesn't give up. He flips through his notebook and sees that a Basker vial has been spotted on the sixth floor of the dungeon. He knows that this is his chance to earn more credits. Excited, he thanks his teacher and sets off to attack. But Cyan has heard everything and is already devising a plan to defeat the monster before Will, sir, and ensure that he is expelled. A day later, Will is back in the dungeon taking his chances. And this time, he goes all the way to the seventh floor. The guy won't stop, bro. Even though he's been reprimanded by Professor Warkner, he's still there, hunting monsters to earn the credits he needs to continue at the academy. If Will wants to climb the Magic Seller's Tower, he'll need more than just brute strength. He needs to prove that he can be a true warrior, not just to himself, but to everyone who doubts him. Later that night, Wilser returns to the dungeon. Confident since he has faced a Basker Vile before, he has a strategy ready, knowing that he needs to dodge the monster's fire. But little does he know that Cyan and his gang are already there, ready to disrupt his plans. But suddenly, things go awry. An evil sentinel appears, much stronger than they expected, and soon one of Cyan's henchmen is smashed against the wall. It's total chaos. Cyan tries to use fire magic on the sentry, but it doesn't even tickle the beast. They are about to be defeated when Wilser hears the screams and rushes to help. Now, Wilser could just let them get on with it after all he's been through and suffered. But no, that's not his style. He remembers Euphoria's words about him being brave and kind, and that gives him the strength he needs. He puts on the glasses she gave him and rushes into battle, sword in hand. Meanwhile, back at the academy, Edward tells Warkner that Cyan and his henchmen have gone to the dungeons. Warkner is worried but relaxes when he finds out that Wilser is there too. In the dungeon, Wilser is blasting away. He hits the sentry with precision, and the monster, furious, starts throwing huge rocks at him. But Wilser is faster than Flash Bro, dodging everything with ease. He leaps into the air and drives his sword into the sentry's weak spot. Sion and Edward are shocked beyond belief at Wilser's monstrous strength, Warkner, who is watching everything, comments that Wilser is an irregular someone with strength beyond what any wizard could dream of. He has the physique of a dwarf and the battle instincts of a veteran warrior. Wilser reads his enemy's movements as if he were seeing the future, bro, dodging every blow and seizing every chance to counterattack. 
With one final blow, he finishes off the sentry, disarming him for good. The sentry tries one last desperate attack, casting a Cyclops-style lightning spell, but Wilser takes it like a champ. With one last move, he slices the monster in half like a piece of expensive paper. Game over for the sentry. Will saves the day. In an epic fight, he defeats the sentry using his sword skills, leaving everyone open-mouthed. Wilser still tries to help Cyan up, but the kid is so angry he's biting his lip, he hates the fact that Wilser has just saved his life. That's it. This fight is insane. Will shows that even without magic, he has what it takes to win. The animation of this battle is breathtaking, and we can see that the guy isn't messing around. The respect he gets after this fight is more than deserved. This episode is pure adrenaline. What an epic fight, my friends. Seeing Will face the challenges of the dungeon, even without magic, is incredible. You can feel how much he wants to prove that he can be someone, that he has value. And Professor Workner, even though he scolds, seems to believe that Will has potential. It's that master-student relationship we love to see in anime. After defeating the Sentinel, Will finally gets the credit he needs, and even Cyan, who didn't want to admit it, has to recognize his ability. The episode ends with Will taking the Sentry's skull as a trophy, proving that he can be as strong as any mage. Now, he's more determined than ever to achieve his dream and show everyone that he has value. This finale leaves us with a taste for more, doesn't it? Seeing Will finally recognized is a victory not only for him, but for everyone who has ever felt underestimated. It's the start of an epic journey, and I can't wait to see what's next. And that's it, folks. That was the summary of the first episode of History Wendant's War. If you liked it, leave a naughty like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the bell so you don't miss the next videos. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Will and who your favorite character is so far. A big hug, and see you next time.